Well, hello. Today we're going to be reviewing two websites by the one company. One is the international website. The other is the local website. And to help me out, as always, I have Simon Ogilvie Lee, our usability and technology expert, John Inglesos, our marketing mastermind. And I will be chiming in every now and then again from a messaging and marketing perspective. So let's have a look at today's website. Fellas, you've got 30 seconds to have a look at the website, come up with one or two things you like, one or two things that you do not like. Now, this is the international site of Axelium, Axelium which is a, um, a software company for schools to help schools uh, do better at online learning. Let's go. So we're going to be focusing on the educational component of this, which I believe is the focus of the local business, whereas this is for organizations and for education. John, what do you have to say? The first thing I really, really love is this video banner. Um, you get a really, really hands-on, well, it's not a hands-on look, but you get a really nice visual look of what it looks like in a hands-on environment. Uh, it, it helps you understand the depth in the product uh, I actually really like that. Um, I, I think it tells you exactly what it's for. Um, so boost your skills with effective strategy games. So you kind of know now that this is an interactive, it's an app. It's something you're gonna be playing around with. I like that they've split the target audiences in two. So we had organizations and we had learning. And in this case, we're gonna be focusing on learning. So that's what I really, really liked. Now, the one thing I don't like, and I see this on a lot of websites uh, and I hate the language, especially top right corner, contact sales. Oh yeah. No. I didn't see that. Yeah. 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 I, I don't, I, I never rate that. And that's mostly because that's not what people are thinking. They don't go to your website for the first time and immediately say, I want to contact sales. You know, maybe they need some sort of assessment or maybe they need some sort of, you know, I, you know, we always talk about an appointment with purpose. That's yeah. really what we've got to be putting there. It's a softer first step. All right, Simon, yeah. what's your first impression? Um, yeah, really good overall, doing a lot of things right, like uh, really good spacing, good use of color. Um, the video banner is really interactive and engaging, so it draws your focus to the call to action buttons. Um, using those two different buttons to split the audience, when you've got two very distinct audiences that you, you cater to, having uh, two calls to action in the banner at the top is probably the only time when you actually would have two. Um, and it's really good because you can then take it down to a different page that talks just to that group of people, um, which in a lot of businesses you do need to do. Um, things I don't like, however, um, as you scroll down this homepage, it starts to lose its uh, effectiveness. It's a lot of learn more buttons. Um, there's a black text on a, go back up, black text on a busy image, even though it's got that um, semi-opaque bit behind it, it makes it easy to read, but it's still a noisy image. So it's hard to read what's there and you kind of just glaze over it. Um, but ultimately with the exception of for organizations and for education, the initial opening headline, um, I don't think it really made it clear exactly why you were gonna be here. What does Excelium do? You can see obviously that they do strategy games, but it didn't really call, I think it could be done better overall. When you click through to both of those pages though, for organizations and for education, fantastic. It is on point, it is engaging, it is interactive and the messaging is more effective. I think the home homepage can be brought up to uh, match the level of the two inner pages. Yeah, I, I, I have very little to add. Uh, the video is great, which gives us an idea of what it's about. Sometimes if you can't name the audience or name what it is that you do, an image can, uh, can tell that story. But this here is, uh, is I really struggle to understand what it's about or what the business does. I love we've got the two different buttons for the different target audiences. It's only when we hit one of those buttons that we truly, under, we, we truly can get an understanding of what this is about, like what's in it for me. Boost learning through game-based assessment and skill development. Suddenly I understand what's in this for me. Uh, when I hit for organizations as well, it explained to me what's in it for me as an organization. I'd pro probably prefer this to say uh, for business, for schools, uh, in terms of language, take your manager's game to the next level. So this is about corporate training. So we can see what it's about. All right, that there is the, um, that there is the international version. Let's look at the local version, 
which is Australia. Simon, I think it's your turn to go first this time. What do you reckon? Good and bad? Um, actually, I think this one does better than the international from a homepage perspective. Um, just that little sentence, game-based blended learning programs, it kind of says it on the box. We talk about biscuit tin. Um, so really simple language to describe what it is that happens. Um, straight away using some uh, good authority points. So you got hot list 2017, hot list 2018, excellent. Um, they do kind of raise the question, like what happened the last two years that you're not as good anymore. Um, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, you could sort of change that up with uh, you know, award winning software for schools, that kind of thing. And then, and then elude it's to- You've got to have the, a logo without the yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's like a fantastic section. The, the way they have the entire section filling the page. So there's only one bit of information being consumed. Color used in the headline, uh, bullet list for people who like to skim, um, the visual stack of the software. It's, it could be improved a bit, um, but I love this one, download curriculum. It's straight away, it's, get, it's saying what it is that I'm gonna be going into doing. Learn more is so washed down and water is like, I, I don't really wanna learn more. I, I need to get on with my day. And it's the same kind of thing as you know, using the contact us language. You've gotta do something better with that. People need to get to the point faster. Yeah, I didn't like that about the other one, how it just said, learn more. You scroll down the page, learn more, learn more. I don't wanna learn more. I wanna take the next step. In this, there's a gift, clearly. Uh, download curriculum. So from a marketing perspective, I know what I'm going to get, what's in it for me. The language is a lot more clear. Uh, just uh, radical transparency. I saw this about, a, about two weeks ago. I don't know what you've done in the last two weeks, Chris, but it's a lot better than what I saw about two weeks ago. Um, uh, yeah, uh, from a marketing perspective, a lot stronger. John, what do you think about this? Yeah, look, I'm glad that we've got a better call to action. You know, book your live demo session now. I'm glad that we've got a better call to action, but I still like to see something, you know, why book that live demo session, right? What's the outcome of booking that demo session? Because for most people, the outcome of the demo is, is, oh, am I going to get served with a, uh, a contract or a proposal, right? Yeah. So what's someone actually looking for in the, in the demo? You know, if they're looking for ways to, uh, to, to enhance attention in the classroom, then maybe that's the focus of the demo. And that's what we can brand uh, this, this call and this contact us around. Um, so again, think of the outcome that someone really wants here. It's not to be served a proposal or a, pre or a pitch. The reason they're doing the demo is because they're looking for an outcome for, in this case, the kids that they're teaching. If it's an attention thing, great. If it's a, if it's a, a cognitive thing, great. Uh, whatever it is, what's the outcome? That's what I'd like to see here. But this is miles ahead of learn more. This is yeah. miles ahead of contact sales. Um, which is which is why I like seeing that in the first place. So great step one, just have a think about what the outcome is that someone really wants here. So it could be classroom engagement boosters assessment. And what we yeah. do together, you can book the call and together we'll talk about different ways that you your school can boost engagement in the classroom. Because we've got to talk to the target audience. We need to talk to their headaches, their obstacles, their aspirations, yeah. their desires. Yeah, I, I know for a fact, I say I've got some points here where great. Yeah. They've got the live demo session, but some people might feel uh, hesitant at this point in their research phase to get on a call with someone again, like you mentioned being sold to. Um, I've seen a lot of companies recently in the software space where they will do a pre-recorded demo. And so you can sign up and watch a demo. Now um, you get the opt-in, you get the name, the email, et cetera. And then they, um, will redirect you to the video page to watch a 15 minute demo that is really on point and succinct in getting an outcome. So that's, you could offer both of these options, speak with someone and have a live interactive demo or watch a demo now. And that's a really good way to sort of just allow people that in the earlier stages to have a low, um, low risk way for them to proceed forward. And nine times out of 10, if they go and watch the live demo, they do want to speak to someone straight after because they've seen a bunch of things that are really cool they and they've got the more questions. Demo, they want to speak to someone straight after. Yeah, exactly. And this is actually a perfect spot for uh, what we'd refer to as a right fit uh, checklist. So at this point, some people might be looking at this going, um, okay, so I get what this is now, um, but is it right for our school? Or is it right for our uh, students or our members or our organization? Um, and then if we created a, a diagnostic there, a checklist that walks through some of the uh, uncovering questions, you know, peeling the layers off the onion, what's the outcome that 
appeals most to you and list, you know, five different outcomes that people can get through using this strategy. So uh, we've talked about engaged students, um, raising test scores, um, having a vibrant, fun, happy uh, classroom, things like that. And if we take people through those types of questions and we don't make it overly complicated, based on the information they give us, then we know how we can show them, say, the live demo that talks about the impact or the case study where XYZ school used it to get these kind of increased test scores or more engaged learning environment. And then your marketing is just way more on point. When you get on the phone with someone after they've gone through that kind of personalized experience, your close rates go through the roof. Johnny. Simon, Simon just nailed exactly what I was going to say. So I know for a fact that, that Chris, just having worked with him, has these statistics. He's able to, he's, he's, I don't know what the numbers are, but I know he's able to say, you know, we can help you increase learning retention by this percentage. We can help you increase attention in the classroom by this percentage. You know, uh, students are much more engaged when they do these kind of things. So that's the framing for booking the demo. You know, do you want to, you know, would you love to see your, your students be you know, 38% more engaged and retain, you know, 12% more learning, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, like, but that's exactly what Simon's saying. It's the framing for the demo. Um, it's more than just, we've got a piece of software, right? There's an outcome here. And those are really good stats that can be worked into the pages. They are a level of proof but also it's this FAQ and frequently asked question or thought in the back of someone's mind when they're evaluating is you know what is this what's the proof what's the stats how is this measurable what's the impact really mm. going to be like and so having you know one section uh, quite often you might see like numbers counting up on a page or a progress bar will slide as you sort of scroll past it showing the skills improvement scores improvements retention rates attention rates all that kind of stuff is just going to add to that layer of confidence before someone reaches out and speaks to you. So to reiterate some of the things that uh, John and Simon have been saying, are there some good, uh, some extra social proof as well too, with the video that goes with it? Absolutely lovely. More testimonials, more logos, more social proof. But to reiterate what, uh, what's being said here is that a form like this is asking for a lot very quickly. It's not quite as bad as learn more or, or contact us for a sales call. But a demo is a, is a big ask. Also, just from a layout perspective, having our email full name and job title on a page is also a big ask. Often you're better off just to have the button. Somebody clicks the button, they're taken to the next page. They've taken a small micro step, but they're more likely to take the next step. Whereas they might look at this and go, I don't want to put my detail in. So to reiterate what the other guys are saying here, one, this is to book a live demo. Do you really need people to look a, book a live demo and are they really going to want to book a live demo? Could you have a 15 minute demonstration there that's available for someone to watch? They can watch it at home on their phone while having a glass of wine or they can watch it in the staff room or on the commute on the way to work. We're talking to teachers who have their days very structured. They can't just suddenly you know, book a live demo in the middle of the day because they're working with other people. But to reiterate, reiterate, reiterate the bigger picture strategy, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong guys, in terms of what you're thinking, it sounds like the better strategy would be to kick things off with some sort of diagnostic, which would open the conversation. And the teacher would click on the button, a diagnostic, sometimes called a checklist, it's a survey that gives rather than takes, they click on it, they answer some questions, we elevate their desire, you know, what goals do you, what, what goals are you seeking? Oh, I want that goal. What are the challenges that you're seeking? So we're highlighting the problems that they have. And then depending on their answers, we can segment them into different directions and maybe offer a strategy call that specifically reflects their headaches, their obstacles, their aspirations. Yeah. And, their and it's funny you mentioned that because I happen to know for a fact that that's in production right now. So Chris is using B2B Dash to build that out right now. And what he's come up with is a scorecard so that these teachers, these vice principals, these principals will be able to benchmark themselves. And because he's such a smart cookie and here's a 2.0 strategy, not only has he got the diagnostic so that he can then introduce the idea of an appointment with purpose, but he's also then going to be able to take all the information and diagnostic and guess what? Turn that into a downloadable benchmarking report so that other people and other teachers and other, you know, uh, 
schools can benchmark themselves versus a standard. So that is definitely happening. Uh, and I'd love to see that on the website too. I think that's a perfect spot for it right up there in that hero section. Let's get people straight uh, into, into that diagnostic. There is that real, um, how do I rate or how do I compare? It's this deep mm. down internal thing. Like how do I compare or rate compared to other people in my industry? And I think that that's a, a really strong angle. Uh, Simon, any final words before we, we rate this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we've I think we've covered a lot. He's done a lot of things really well. He's been able to draw from the international site and then make the local version for himself. Um, it's excellent. I think he's done a really good job. And knowing, uh, obviously, from what John said, what's coming in the pipeline, um, you know, it's fantastic. And I'm looking forward to seeing the near final final version or the next iteration. There never is a final version. It's yeah, always an iterative right. process. And that's, that's the key is just to make sure that you are making consistent changes and tweaks and improvements and testing a few things here and there. What do you, what do you reckon, Phil? Is a, a high B plus or an A? I'm going to go high B plus for me. I think it's a high B plus too. I know there's some stuff in the pipeline that's going to happen and that's going to take it to an A. There's some other things that, uh, that Chris is not doing yet that we've just discussed today that'll take it to an A or an A plus. So it's a high B plus, but it's, yeah. uh, I like where oh, it's I remember heading. folks, it's hard to get an A plus, very hard. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. It's an A plus today and then it's an A tomorrow and then it's a B plus the next day because things are always changing. That's right. So you'll, you'll never get an A plus 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 from us, but uh, as long as it's getting better, it's the right thing, right? So great job, uh, Chris Ramson of Axelium. If you're running a school uh, um, and you want to know how to get some uh, game-based blended learning programs into your business, I think that you know where to go. Um, and um, thanks again, John and Simon. Pleasure. Toodles. I'm sure you might be watching this and thinking, how can I get my website reviewed by these fine fellows if you'd like to do that what should somebody do simon just really simply look for the link that's somewhere underneath this video give us an idea of your situation let us know if you want to have a private b2b website review with us over the phone or whether you actually want to have a public one more like what you've just watched and then we'll reach out to you as soon as we can when someone gets a private strategy call john uh what can they expect yeah, so we call these a winning website review. And at the end of the day, what it's about is helping you actually capture the attention of the strangers and the traffic that ends up on your site, keep them sticky, keep them engaged, keep them involved, but not just involved, converting into an appointment, a meeting in your diary, which is the ultimate outcome of having a website. And guess what, folks? We do B2B websites. We don't do our websites, we just do B2B websites. When you go to a web developer, by and large, most of the time you're hiring a mechanic. A mechanic can turn the screws, can tweak the nuts and bolts. I'm not a mechanic, but I'll tell you what they can't do. They can't teach you how to win a Grand Prix. The three of us are strategists. Strategists first and foremost, we're gonna help you get your strategy up to scratch and then help you build the website to match. That's what you need to do. Find that link below, book a private strategy call, a winning websites review, or you can elect to have uh, your website reviewed publicly by us three nutbags. Thanks and bye for now.